Today I'd like to walk you guys through the geometric optics lab. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get to the lab. So I've had a couple questions about how to get to the lab and um, some students are kind of struggling with it. So um, you click on uh, course materials and you click on content. If nothing is showing on the left side, that just means you haven't ever gone to the content before. Um, and so it's not going to show up, but it, this part will show up. So just click on the unit you want. Um, so for example, um, I'm looking at the optics lab, so that's going to be in the optics unit. So I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to just click on this first page. Okay, um, here we go. So here, um, and then again, the labs are on this, um, this right side over here. So I'm just going to kind of go through these pages until I see the lab there. I don't see it there. It's going to be under handouts. I don't see it on this page. Here we go. It's right here. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. It's going to um, show up in my downloads folder. So wherever your downloads go, that's where your lab's going to be. And then I'm going to close this page because I don't need it. Anymore. Okay, so here's my lab. So I'm going to put it over here on the right side of the screen like I, um, like I tend to do. And this just is so that I can see um, <clears throat> the the simulation and the lab paper at the same time so I can look at them both at the same time and I don't have to print. Okay, so here I just clicked on the link. So now I'm getting it to come up. Okay, so as it say, it says I need to download it. So I'm going to download it. This is just a video. It's not the actual lab. Again, that's going to show up in my downloads folder. I can go ahead and close this because I won't need that anymore. And I can see it right here. It's just kind of, here we go. So I'm going to click on that. It says it can't be open because it's from an unidentified developer. So I'm going to go to settings and uh, I'm going to go to security and privacy. It says, ooh, it was blocked from opening because it's not from an identified developer. I'm going to say I want to open it anyway. Um, and it'll ask me, am I sure? Yes, I'm sure. Um, and then here it is. Okay, this says they're collecting anonymous information. Um, you can disable this in the preferences, but agree and continue. Okay, so now I've got my lab and I can try and solve it. Okay, so um, it says find the menu and choose the following settings. Principal ray, it's right there, and then uh, virtual image, it's on the right, screen, and ruler. Okay. Um, and then it says 0 0.8, 1.53, 0 0.8. Okay. So I'm good. Um, and then it wants me to measure the focal length of the lens. Okay, so your focal length is here. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of take my mouse point and I'm going to move it up. I'm at like, what, like uh, 24. Um, so it's 24 and 100. So basically it's like 100 minus 24. Okay. So I'm just going to um, write this right here so I don't forget it. Is that going to be 76? And that's in centimeters, okay? Now, we want to place the light where the base of the light is on the principal axis. So I want this light to be right here, okay? Um, oh, and we can also move the ruler down. Ooh, that's nice. That would have made that a lot easier, huh? So it looks like I was right, though. Um, Sorry, I'm going to keep it in the middle. So I think that's just going to make it easier. There we go. Okay. And um, we want it 160 centimeters away from the lens. Okay, so 160 
is right here. And I want the light, the actual light 160 centimeters away. Oh, look at that. That's basically where I was. That's handy. Okay, right, so it's where the, the rays of light start. So they actually have the rays of light a little bit. Yeah, so I'm just going to do this. Well, they don't have it that way. Okay, I'm going to do it like this. That way, if you can see, the late rays of light are starting here, and that's right at the edge of that. Um, okay. Now we want to record the location of the image. Okay, so the um, the image is going to be where these intersect, right here. Okay, so this is what they said. They said it's where the dot on the screen is the smallest, which also happens to be right where they intersect. Okay, and then I'm going to need to measure this. Okay, so I'm going to go. I have to start from the center of my lens. Well, that's annoying that the ruler goes behind the screen. That's frustrating. I'm going to move this screen out of the way because it's just where these intersect right here. Okay, so what is that? 150, 20, 40, 144. Okay, and I'm putting that in my data table. Okay, and then we're going to repeat it for 130 centimeters, 100 centimeters, 60 centimeters, and 40 centimeters. Um, virtual images won't be projected, so you'll just measure the image distance. Okay, so that um, we'll, when we get there, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, and then we're going to calculate the um, expected image distance using the lens equation and um, show your work for 130 centimeters and 40, 40 centimeters. Okay, so to calculate the image distance, you're going to need to use this guy. Okay, and then um, you have your focal length. What did we do? We wrote it up here, 76 centimeters. So we'll have something like uh, 1 over 76 equals um, 1 over 160 plus 1 over di. Okay, I'm going to take, I'm going to do uh, 1 over di equals 1 over 76 minus 1 over 60. Okay, and now um, keep in mind, this is really important. A lot of students um, make a mistake here. Okay, so we've got 1 over di equals 1 over 76. So I'm going to do um, 1 divided by 76 minus 1 divided by 60. Okay, and I'm going to get a really small number. Okay. Okay, now in order to get the correct answer Okay, I need to move, because this is 1 over di, right? So I need to do di equals, um, so I'm going to move it to both sides. We're going to do 1 divided by negative 0 0.0035. And you have to do this in order to get di, otherwise you're not getting the right answer, right? You're just getting... negative 285.71. Okay, now that is interesting. That seems a little different than what I got. So I'm going to look at this and make sure that I'm okay. Okay, virtual image. Let's see. 
gonna pull this bigger just to make sure. Okay, we need this very small dot, remember. Okay, so I have 120. So they suggest measuring this blue line where it disappears, which is still kind of hard to see. Right, so I, I think this is actually easier. So it looks like what, 144. Okay, and then let's see. Let's make sure this is 160. Yep. Okay, well, that's what we've got. And let's see our focal length. Let's make sure we got that correctly. That's 72, 4, 6, 76. Okay, so we, um, We got it correct. Um, oh, I see what I did. Look what I did here. Um, check this out. This is important, okay, because you guys might make a mistake like this too. Um, you know, when you get an answer and you go, hmm, that doesn't seem really right, right, because it's not the same. Um, or not even close. So let's look and see. See how I have 1 over 76 equals 1 over 160? Well then here I just put 60. So it needs to be 1 over 160, right? So that's why my answer is wrong. So let's try that. Okay, so this is going to give us a completely different number. Okay. And it's a positive number. Do you see that? Which makes more sense to me because a uh, negative number would mean that it would be on this left side, the same side as the light, and see it should be on the right side. So that should have tipped me off, but I was going with it. Okay, so I'm going to change this to this 0.69 again. And then let's do 1 divided by 0 0.0069. See what that is. Look at that, 144.93. That is so much closer, right? That makes much more sense. I, I feel much better about that. Okay, so that's kind of how you'll solve these problems. Okay, and you need to show your work for the 130 and the 40. Okay, now um, let's try another one. Let's do, let's do uh, 60 just to see what happens. I want to do a virtual image. Um, so I want to see which one will work. So we want 60 centimeters away. So I'm going to move my light till it's right here. Okay, do you see what happened here? Now, um, let me see if I can make this larger. Okay, so at 60, we've got, um, we've got the light rays coming back here, and they are going to meet somewhere back here, which, let me see if I can change the preferences. Um, so that's not going to work. So we're just going to have to kind of guesstimate a little bit. Um, so this is, this is 200 right here. Okay. And then, um, I'm trying to think of a way that I can I'm just going to put my hand on the screen right where this is so I know where to move it to. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of guess where these might meet, maybe like that. Okay, so I'm going to do like 260. I don't know if that's right. Um, you know, it's hard to tell because the, it goes all the way to the edge there and they don't let you adjust this um, but we'll try um, 260 that's confusing that doesn't help okay so I'll do 260 as my image distance and then oh that's not for that one 
and then I'm going to do um, I'm going to do the math again, um, just so we can see if we got it kind of right. So um, this should be one over seventy-six equals um, one over sixty plus one over di. So then we have one over di equals one over seventy-six minus one over sixty. Then we have one over di equals. Do you see how I just basically copied what they had here, and I just put my new numbers in? Okay. Now, look at this. This is actually, this is kind of funny. This is what I put before, right, when I did it wrong for the first one. So we'll get a negative, and that's actually okay because that's what we want. Because you see how our image where it looks like the rays are coming together is on the same side as the light. That's why we're getting that. That's what that negative means. Okay, and so... Um, we're actually getting what we're supposed to get um, for that. So let's see. Where's my calculator? That's what I have. One over. I know I did it before, so I could just look up, but I'm going to do it again. Okay, negative 285. Now, it's not as close as the last one, but remember the last one we were actually able to measure, where this one we kind of had to guesstimate. So 260, 285, that's, that's not too far off. I, I'm okay with that. Um, and that makes sense, right? It's at least like, you know, above 250, below 300. Um, and it's the sign is correct for the right side. So that's, um, that's kind of how you'll do those. And, and like, a, um, like they said earlier, that's a virtual image. And so that's why... Um, this little screen here, you know, nothing's showing up on that screen because it's it's a virtual image. I'm trying to move this screen, but it won't move. But that's interesting. Anyway, um, now it says the second test will show how a change in focal length changes the location of the image. So we're going to return our image location to 160. Okay, so I'm going to put 160 at the center of the lens, and I'm going to put my image um, where it starts. See how the rays, I want them to start like right at the edge of the ruler. So that's about right. Um, and then it says, um, copy the results from your first trial into table two. Okay, so they want like, um, this was like, if your focal length was 76, then your measured image distance would be 144. And then your calculated image distance would be 144.93. Okay, so that's what they wanted me to record. Okay, then it says set the curvature radius to 1 and measure the focal length. Okay, so the curvature radius, I'm going to move this to 1. And now I'm going to measure my focal length. Okay, so I'm going to take put zero at the center of this x, and then um, I'll measure what we've got here. So we've got like what, 92, 94, about 94. Um, and then we're going to measure our image distance again. Okay, so our image distance again is going to be where um, these intersect. So I'm at 200 here. And since it's a little farther than this, I'm going to put my finger here. 
That way I can, you know, remeasure it. I'm going to move this screen out of the way. So what we have 200, 210, 220, 230, 238. So I'm going to write that here. And then um, we can calculate the image distance again. And I'm going to calculate it um, for this one just because I want to make sure that we did it right. Okay, so we have, um, let me make this red. We have 1 over 94 equals 1 over 238, or sorry, 1 over 260, or 160, plus 1 over di. So then we have 1 over di is equal to 1 over 94 minus 1 over 160. So 1 over di is equal to, so I'm going to do 1 over 94. And do you see how I'm putting these in parentheses? This makes sure that I get the right answer. Because otherwise, sometimes the calculator doesn't know order of operations as well as we do. So I got this. It's a positive number, so at least it's on the right side. It, you know, it makes sense. Um, and then we can do di equals one divided by zero point zero zero four four. We get two twenty seven. That's not too bad. It's not as close as our other one, but um, I think what's throwing these off a little is, is um, probably my fingers a little fatter than, um, you know, if I could do like the mouse point, but if I put the mouse point here, then I try and put my ruler there, you know, it's, it's going to move the mouse point going to get the ruler. So, um, and then it says it just wants to repeat for a curvature radius of um, 0.9, um, 0.7, and 6. Okay, so you guys can do that. And then it says um, calculate image distance for all of the trials. Okay, so you guys can do that. I've done one for you. And then there's some conclusion questions, okay? Um, here's a hint. When it says explain, you can't just say, like, yes or no, or, um, you know, you have to explain your answer, why you came to that answer. Okay, that's um, kind of important, okay? Um, but anyway, that's how you do the geometric optics lab.